Gav, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. How uh, are you today? Good evening. Good, good evening. evening. I'm good. How are you? Good. What are you drinking? Very dapper there. <laughs> um, I have some red wine, and I'm very impressed with the polka dot bar. It's really uh, good, right? Yeah. You, you see the the logo and everything, the new brand. Yeah, I do indeed. I see poke. Yeah. Uh, you see poke. We got a dot right oh, there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the new, the new, uh, yeah, the yeah. New logo. Lovely. There you go. Well, as you know. The community has submitted some questions for you via Twitter with the hashtag AskTheFounders. We have selected some of them and we're ready to ask away. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. I'm ready. The first question is, Parachain Auctions is the fifth and final stage of the planned Polkadot development. What will the core development of the Polkadot Relay Chain look like after that? Um, yeah, so this is the... Um I think the the um, polka dot uh, in the code or, or the the documentary from just before mentioned me actually saying that indeed this is the final delivery segment. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, you know, it's it's uh, chapter closed, first chapter. Um, second chapter is, um, I mean, you know, Parity is uh, very much committed to developing. Um, developing the polka, polka dot protocol and its implementation of it into a sort of 1.x series you know we've got this 1.0 release um uh, uh, essentially um uh, out um and uh really the uh the main elements that i'm looking to uh, push forward on the core development level would be um you know performance optimizations for transaction throughput um, it, you know, networking and, uh, and and certain features like contextual execution, which are really going to um, help elevate these numbers. Uh, message passing, um, performance optimizations as well, so make XCMP faster than it uh, than it currently is. Um, Parathreads and Spree are, uh, are two also uh, really important core technologies that will be um, sort of in the 1.x um, core development roadmap um, for Parity. Um, there's also a bunch of, uh, you know, I mean, Polkadot's based on Substrate. The whole point of Substrate, or one of the sort of really important points of Substrate is that meta protocol, right? It's a web assembly based meta protocol, so it's upgradable over time. It can change and it can shift and it can improve um, really quite, uh, in terms of its operational footprint, really quite easily. Um, and so really we want to make sure that these improvements are coming thick and fast over the, over, uh, over the course of the next um, uh, years to come. And, uh, you know, the thing that, that's sort of exciting at the moment is the prospect of, of uh, evolving the governance elements of Polkadot Relay um, from the initial sort of one governance version one to, uh, to something more inclusive and you know, more, more, uh, more agile, um, treasury management tools, um, uh, the economic uh, features uh, within, the, within the protocol. And uh, and also like things like auctions, improving auctions, potentially looking at ways that we can uh, make these um, uh, uh, somehow uh, fairer or faster or whatever. So yeah, we got a we got a lot of stuff to come, and I think it's gonna uh, it's gonna be a, a really interesting road. It's gonna be an exciting year. Yeah, right. As much as today is a completion and ending of the polka dot, the the completion of the polka dot white paper, Gav, that you wrote five years ago, it's also hearing you talk the beginning of something much much bigger. And our second question coming from the community is: What type of solutions are you most excited to be built on top of polka dot and interoperate? Um. Well, there's a few things that are. Uh, you know that, that that spring to mind i mean it depends really what you mean by on top of i, I look at like as a, as a core technologist you know um on top of what we have now i mean spree is kind of on top of what we what we have now and this is one of the sort of um core level features uh that i'm i'm really uh really interested to see because it's going to be a bit of a game changer in terms of how the various parachains can interoperate with each other um, but if we're looking at like strictly things that are built on top, like as, as parachains, then um, I, I think I think there's a couple of like interesting uh, interesting things like bridges in general are, are really interesting um, use cases uh, within the parachain model, um, and a uh, a potentially like a very low friction, very cheap, um, non collateralized um, uh, bridge for like the Bitcoin, like typical Bitcoin technologies. Um, allowing you know Polkadot to hold Bitcoin through 
maybe like a trusted execution environment based multi signature um, uh, system, I think could be quite interesting. Um, probably one of the most exciting things for me, though, would be a secure substrate bridge hub, which effectively would allow like um, dozens, potentially over 100 substrate chains to be securely bridged in on a single parachain slot. And with this, you can really imagine um, a huge amount more flexibility than the traditional um, uh, parachain model um, and uh, potentially an awful lot, um, huge magnification of the amount of uh, transactions uh, that could be secured. Nice. Now, you've been working in the blockchain industry for what, six, seven, eight years? Um, what's a common myth about blockchain that you can debunk? Um, the one that, that, that comes to mind, I think it's really most, um, I, I don't know how prevalent it is within the sort of true believer community, but eh, you know, once you sort of make your way outside of that, I think it, it does become quite prevalent. Um, it's this concept that like maybe like decentralization somehow is equivalent to unstoppability, right? And these two things are quite different. Um, which is why on uh, on Polkadot we we try and call um, the applications uh, unstoppable apps, U apps, rather than simply DApps, decentralized apps. Um, and I'll tell you why it's uh, why the two things are not the same, right? Bitcoin, the reason Bitcoin is a thing and wasn't like shut down is because it was unstoppable. Like to all practical uh, purposes, it was unstoppable. Now it it was unstoppable. How did how did it attain this like attribute of unstoppable of unstoppability? Well, it did it through sufficient decentralization. But the really important word in there is sufficient, right? Decentralization is a bit like democracy. It exists along a, along a spectrum. And on the one hand, you can have like theoretical democracy uh, where it's like, yeah, people kind of vote, but like it's their, their intentions are not well respected. Um, and on the other end, you've got like some, some mythical, like true democracy uh, that's like perfect in every way, but that's never really realizable. So every, every democratic system um, falls in between them and every decentralized system falls in between, you know, not really very decentralized at all and theoretically perfectly decentralized. Um, what matters is if it's in decentralized enough to be unstoppable. And there's a lot of systems which are somewhat decentralized, but are not really unstoppable. Like they could be stopped fairly easily. And... Um, the, some of these are even in like the, the really high up on the, uh, the, the, the coin market cap table. And it's, uh, it's really important, I think, to remember that unstoppable is not the same as decentralized. It really does have to be sufficiently decentralized. Nice. Great. Now, Gav, where does the Polkadot name come from? How did you come up with the name? Why did you choose the name Polkadot? Um, well, there's a few uh, there's a few stories going around about this. Um, in, in some sense, it was a bit of a back um, a back naming. Um, in that, uh, I quite like the idea that polka dot the, the pattern of polka dots is um, doesn't have a center, right? It's it's not like a logo where you can actually well the logo is in this space here. There's the center of the space. That's kind of the center of the logo. Uh, with with uh, with polka dots, it's just an infinite pattern in all directions, and there isn't a center to any to the polka dot pattern, um, which I think fits quite nicely. Also, the idea of pluralism—you've got a lot of dots, and this this fits polka dot in many respects. It fits it on the you know both in terms of there being lots of parachains, and in terms of there being you know a governance with lots of um, lots of sort of input sources for the decision making. Um, but if you want to know the sort of real reason why it was called Polkadot, um, it actually is much simpler. Um, as most, um, I, I guess, probably many of the viewers here will know, I wrote um, one, of the, one of the sort of things that I'm most known for is writing the Ethereum yellow paper. Um, and when it came to writing a Polkadot paper, I, I figured I would, you know, give it a similar identity. Um, at the time, Polkadot wasn't known as Polkadot. I had a couple of other sort of working titles. Um, and, and I was thinking, what color shall I put in the background? And I was like, ah, I'll just, I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll move on from colors because colors had already been copied by a few of the other uh, papers that had come out um, in the last, in the 12 months before. So I figured maybe I'd do a pattern. And I thought, stripes, nah, Polkadot's more fun. So I made this Polkadot pattern for the, for the, um, for the white paper of what currently, uh, what is currently known as Polkadot. 
And um, after, I don't know, a few weeks of looking at the, I forget what it was called, but like the, 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 the system that, that, that thence became known as Polkadot, I quite liked the, uh, I, I started calling it the Polkadot paper rather than like, you know, the yellow paper or the, the pink paper. And, um, and it sort of just came to me, well, why not just call the protocol Polkadot? Because it's the Polkadot paper now, after all. And, um, and so I ditched the uh, pre-existing names and, uh, and here we are today. And the paper looks really cool. Yeah. So that's really good. Um, throughout the year, we've talked a lot about XEMP. Um, we have begun to scratch the surface of what XCM is capable of. What kind of future do you ambition for this type of protocol uh, once it's fully active? Yeah, I mean, so XCMP, I think once uh, once we roll out certain other things like, you know, parathreads and Spree, um, XCMP, which is the mechanism by which Polkadot allows its parachains to talk to each other, um, is uh, will really uh, sort of come into a life of its own uh, in that it will allow um, it will allow these entirely disparate chains that don't even necessarily trust each other. They trust they trust that Polkadot is going to keep them in check, but they don't trust each other's logic. They don't necessarily trust that, like for example, each other's governance systems. Um, and that means that they can't do certain things uh, directly. They work through intermediary chains, like the, for example, statement. Um, but with uh, with Spree, um, we allow for things like the logic of statement to exist actually in a protected enclave that sits within each parachain. And with XCMP, this allows these chains to communicate directly in, a, um, in an entirely trust-free fashion. Um, and this, uh, you know, this in, in, introduces all you know, performance benefits, um, as well as uh, all sorts of uh, possibilities for like rich uh, information flow, things like certification um, that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Um, but of course, XCMP is one technology and XCM is an entirely different technology. XCM is, the, is actually the message format that sits, um, that, that, that sits uh, on, on, on these protocol um, uh, uh, transports like XCMP. And XCM allows chains, whether they are potentially outside of Polkadot, to express their intention, express some meaning. Um, about what's going on or what they expect of the of the destination, um, uh, which uh, is is general, which is abstract, which basically means it's compatible between different systems. And this uh, this kind of new message format is is quite exciting, and it will um, eventually allow for all sorts of um, again rich information uh, to be passed and rich instructions, rich declarations um, to be passed between. Um, entirely disparate systems, again, perhaps systems outside of Polkadot um, uh, uh, over bridges and so forth, that XCMP alone wouldn't be able to um, transport the message to. Nice. Yeah, excellent. XCMP and like you previously said, Spree are you know two things I certainly am looking forward to to come out of Polkadot and really realize the potential of Polkadot. Now, Gav, for the last question of the evening, we've got to know, who should have won Eurovision 2021? Uh, well, you know, in my mind, there was uh, there was barely a contest. I thought Iceland um, Iceland did uh, uh, very well, uh, and I, I think uh, had it been any other year, Iceland would uh, would most certainly have gotten my vote. But uh, 2021 was no ordinary year in Eurovision. Uh, it had two uh, exceptional acts on. And for my, my, uh, for my money, uh, Lithuania was without a doubt uh, Eurovision winner 2021. And uh, in my mind, uh, the, the previous 10 years as well. Wow. <laughs> that's a statement. Well, Gav, that's all the time we have. We want to thank you for joining the party. And uh, we hope to see you in 2022. And uh, we wish you a very, very happy new year. And I wish you guys a great party going forward. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. You as well.